The character I play is Orion Pax, who some may know is the individual who becomes Optimus Prime. Feels fantastic to be officially part of the Transformers franchise. Uh, I, like many of my friends, grew up playing with Transformers, watching the cartoons, big fan of the films. So to be involved in the animation space is incredible. To be voicing Optimus Prime is, uh, is, is another level again. I think what intrigued me or drew me to the project was I hadn't been a part of an animation film before, so this was a new creative venture. Uh, but the fact that this was the origin story of uh, Optimus Prime, and for some people who may know that he begins as Orion Pax, as a uh, insignificant worker in the mines, and then this is the the birth of a hero, really. And this is his journey to becoming the all-powerful, all-knowing Optimus Prime that we that we love. Peter Cullen has voiced the character of Optimus Prime for over four decades now, and uh, it was certainly. Uh, there was a huge amount of anxiety and trepidation coming into this, um, big shoes to fill for sure, but I used everything that he had done as uh, inspiration and influence and I feel honoured to be alongside him now uh, to play this character. I've done a lot of action films uh, in the live action space, but this is the first time in the animation world and I've got to say it actually takes a lot more physicality and effort than I first assumed. I thought I'd just be sitting in a chair reading lines, but um, for the action scenes in, in particular in our film, I was jumping around and having to throw punches and make noise and kind of you know exert a fair amount of energy to give uh, what was going to be heard on screen um, something very specific and something that had the same um, energy that, uh, that, that the character that you were seeing, the animation character, was was also giving off. Yeah, there's many themes in this film that we're able to explore. Um, a big one being friendship. It really is about their journey and their evolution as individuals. And it's about friendship. It's about personal growth. It's about exploring one's path in life. There's a great amount of comedic banter in the film, which was a lot of fun to explore. Uh, this is a film about two best friends. Uh, sadly, they become enemies, but up until, until that point, um, there, there, there was a lot of fun to be had. The first time I met Josh Cooley, uh, there was a great sense of, 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 of trust I had within his vision. He had such passion and enthusiasm for the world, a huge amount of knowledge and understanding. And, you know, there was going to be epic visuals and the, the animation was going to be fantastic. But at the heart of it, he wanted to get down to what the, the point of the story was that we were telling, which was about these uh, two individuals um, the journey of self-discovery, but about a friendship that unfortunately ends up in, in a space where the two of them become enemies. Um, but Josh's passion and, and detail and nuance was, was incredible and it was a lot of fun to work with him. So finding the voice for Orion Pax was a lot of fun. We wanted to honour the legacy of what Peter Cullen had done, but we did want to do something uh, different and unique and the character also uh, was a younger version of what we know as Optimus Prime. So it did have to have a different vocal quality and different rhythm to it. Um, and, and, and that was a really, really um, fun, creative journey to, to um, map that out. The film was unlike anything I've seen in the animation space. It was incredible. Visuals were stunning, um, action-packed. Uh, the, the colours, the tones, the detail, uh, again, just felt fresh and unique and exciting. I am Brian Tyree Henry, and I play D16, who becomes Megatron. It still doesn't truly feel like it happened, uh, and that I'll be a part of the pantheon that is Transformers as one of the greatest, you know, arch nemesis of all time. Uh, but I was incredibly elated. My inner child was going insane, uh, still is. But, it, you know, you, you answer the call. It, it, it truly was... Uh, you know, just one of those benchmarks in your career that you're like, oh, I really did that. Like, I'm really a part of that. So it, it still feels truly incredible, incredibly honored, too. That's always been my favorite thing about villains, actually, is like, you know, I don't believe any villains started completely evil or angry. Like, something made them who they were, and then they go on this charge to fulfill whatever destiny they think they have to. Um, but what I really like about this one is that it is truly the beginning. And we got all the humans out of the way. That's the thing with trans. Like, get get the humans out of there. You know, humans complicate stuff. So, like this one, we at least start on Cybertron, where they originate, which is their home. We rarely get to see like 
where they come from and 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 also just to see the absolute beginning of Optimus and Megatron, like the, the fact that they were actually brothers, like really close brothers, best friends, um, and what unfolded and how they got to where they were. So the, the origin of, of all these Transformers uh, is what really appealed to me. D16, scrappy, smart, hard worker, uh, really likes to follow the rules, uh, a really loyal friend, a really great dude, a lot of heart, um, but, he isn't as precocious and inquisitive about why things are the way they are as, uh, you know, Orion Pax, uh, Optimus Prime. He, he truly is aspiring to be more, but he's not gonna, like, he's not gonna cross the line. He, he's about justice. He hates injustice. Um, and he's just really loyal. And, and what I love the most about playing D16 was to really find the heart of who he was, you know, to really find out, you know, what made him laugh, what made him, you know, what made him uh, fearful, all the things that truly you don't really get to see once he becomes Megatron. I really wanted to figure out, uh, get to the core, honestly, of who he was. The biggest thing you find out about D16 is that he truly is about fighting injustice. He really wants uh, to right the wrongs that have happened. He doesn't like being deceived. He doesn't like you know, feeling like he isn't worth anything. And I just wanted people to really care about that, to really follow his heart and to see that, you know, he is championing for things to be right. He doesn't like injustice. And and I think that that's one of the best traits about him. You know, I think that's what we kind of want in our friends, right? We want somebody that's gonna be our protector, that'll have our back, that'll actually stand up for us. And that's D16 in a nutshell. It's crazy when you watch the film how much our personalities are really in these characters because I feel like Orion is Chris 100,000%. Um, you know, the precociousness, the, the like little deviant, you know, a little mischievous, but also truly just uh, a person that you want to follow, a person that you want to like tag along with. You know, all these little schemes that he comes up with. Uh, but a truly, truly good friend. To play with Chris, like, you know, like when when you meet him, he's just absolutely the most approachable, loving, silly, goofiest person ever. And so when you put the two of us together in these two, you know, characters, you watch this friendship blossom, you root for this friendship, you want to see it um, become more uh, steeped in like loyalty and love rather than what we eventually know it becomes. We're seeing them on their home planet. We're seeing them on their home turf. We're seeing them where they originated. We're seeing them actually discovering who they are. I, the whole premise of this movie is them trying to figure out who they are um, in, on this planet. Uh, if they, you know, they've been assigned certain destinies of, of what they're gonna be and where, what charge they have to take and where they live and what they do and what job it is. And, you know, you watch them. Uh, it's, it's such a coming of age tale. And so you're watching, you know, Orion and D16 try to figure out who they are. Where you have D16 who's like, oh yeah, that's what they told me I'm gonna be. That's what I'm gonna be. Where Orion is very much like, there's gotta be something more. And I think we all can relate to that. I think, you know, as we grow, these are the things that we're trying to figure out about ourselves. Where do we belong? Where do we fit? Who are the people that are gonna be by our side? Like, what, what does friendship truly mean? And so you meet all of these characters trying to figure all of that out. Josh's excitement is really contagious. And, and, and I love that when we want to go back to these stories that we've all held um, over time that we grew up with, you want somebody who truly cares about it. Somebody who you felt like sat right on the sofa with you Saturday morning eating a bowl of cereal. Uh, and that's who Josh is. His imagination is unlike anything that I've ever seen. You, you can't help but get excited. I hope that whatever notions that people walked into Transformers with, we completely changed their minds. I, I want people to truly care about Megatron, to see that, you know, there was more to him, to really hold the friendship that the four of these um, bots had very close, to know that everything that we have been told isn't necessarily the truth of who these bots are, and that you walk out 
with your heart like just incredibly full of just like oh you know like that's that's where they started that that's what was possible uh and fun because it's a funny mo- it's fun it is absolutely fun the adventure that they go on on this one is non-stop like it, it it from the moment you sit down it's 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 off to the races i think that this is a reminder of why we go to the movies a movie like this it's a reminder of why we you know, come out of our homes and sit next to a bunch of strangers uh, to have this kind of joy, to have that kind of fun, and the nostalgia of it, um, and how we're just flipping it up in, on its head, so you get to see the beginning. I mean, you can go to any country and say Transformers, and they'll know exactly what it is. So I think that that is a testimony uh, and a testament to who they are, like, and and what this story means to people, and and just how ahead of its time it was. I am an enormous fan of Josh Cooley, uh, our director. I absolutely love his brain. I love his work so much. And I knew he was working on the Transformers film. Um, you know, we were like, we've been kind of creatively circling each other for a long time. And it was a complete, total surprise when he wrote to me and asked me to voice Alita. He was like, I've been working on the script. I can only hear your voice playing this character. Um, I, I just, it was, it was a, sh- it was a total shock. Um, and so I read the script and it was so great. It was such a great script. I was so happy for Josh and it just felt like it was, I, was like, I said, of course, I would love to collaborate on this with you. And then I started looking at all the renderings from ILM. I mean, it was just, I, it was so exciting to be a part of something that was completely fresh and an origin story. Um, I got to collaborate, obviously, with my good friend Chris Hemsworth, um, and he sort of like pulled me into. He was like, "Come on, let's do this together." And I think also to make to be a part of something that felt like an introduction to a new generation too. Um, obviously, I grew up surrounded by Transformers, but you know, for my daughter who's ten, she's going to get to experience Transformers in a whole new way for the first time. Alita is sort of on her own journey um, because when you see her, she is really, she very much believes in, you know, the, um, the process of, you know, like moving up in the ranks. She's almost like, um, I would describe her as a, it's almost like she works for like a big corporation or something like that. She's kind of on this like corporate ladder, like in a, in a way, I'm um, like, okay, so if I get, you know, if I get this work done, like I'm gonna get a promotion and I'm gonna get it done on time and I can like, you know, be efficient, I'm gonna get a promotion and then I'm gonna be like at this ranking. And then like, that's, you know, she's sort of like moving up the ladder and she suddenly has to kind of reevaluate everything that she's thought, all of her values are suddenly like turned upside down. Not her values necessarily, but her, everything that she thought was, her reality is just completely transformed, for lack of a better word. And she is, you know, she's suddenly like staring at a different, like she's looking right at a different, a completely different reality than what she has been living in. And I think she's a character that has a lot of integrity. She's a born leader. She's kind of a type A personality who is a little bit of a control freak, but she's like very efficient and responsible and a little tightly wound. That's how I would describe her. Josh is a very animated person and he also has a great like speaking voice and he hears the musicality of the lines in his in his head, which is what makes him such a great director and writer or director. So that's really helpful actually, because he knows kind of what he's, I can, sometimes I would even be like, can I parrot you? Because you have in your mind, like something that is like a specific quality that like I'm trying to, you know, emulate. It's just fun. I love doing voice work. I love the specificity of it and I love the nuance of it and it's delicate work, which is, which I enjoy. Um, yeah, so it was, it was, was awesome. Really, really fun. And I, again, I love working with Josh so much that it's always a pleasure to be with him and hang out. And he's, he loves to laugh too. So he laughs a lot during the dialogue, especially because there's a lot of fun comedy in the film and it's his very specific kind of brand of comedy, very dry and, and sort of silly. And so, uh, a little bit like sarcastic humor.
They really created something that feels completely unique to this Transformers, and I'm really excited to see that. And yeah, and to hear it too, because the sound is giant. I mean, when you think of Transformers, you just think of like the soundscape too. Um, so I'm excited for the whole experience. I'm gonna get my big popcorn. <laughs> and I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm inviting my friends and their kids, and I think it's gonna be awesome. I'm, I'm very excited for it. The characters are, I think, represent, like really represent like an organic group of friends and like all of their differences and their humor and, you know, is very much feels like, yeah, a group of like a group of teenage friends. And so I think because of that, it really appeals to, there's like a nostalgic piece to it. Um, there's a lot of integrity to the story and like the message is really important. And so I think parents would also appreciate that, but it's also just really fun and funny. So I think, you know, for, like my daughter will love it too. Um, like we'll love to see it together because it's just, it's just fun and it's like such a fun experience. It's like you can go with, like your grandparents can take you, you could go with your date. It's just has, it has a lot of different appeal to it. And I think Josh, his humor is, again, so ironic and very much like on that perfect line, like it's for kids, but it's also for adults, like adults will understand like the greater meaning of stuff in a different kind of way. And it also appeals to kids because it's like right at their level too. Um, it's, that's why I loved the script. I was like, you, you nailed it. You really got it. It's like such a fun read. It like ignites the kid in me, but I also love it as, you know, a mom. My name is Keegan-Michael Key, and I play the character of Bumblebee in Transformers 1. I got involved with the project through the director, Josh Cooley, he came and asked if I wanted to be a part of this project, and I, I gave him a resounding yes, because I am a child, a Transformers child. I was a, a, one of those kids that came home after school and watched the show, and so I was, uh, I was all in. I was all in from his, uh, the first asking. Something that really that really uh, pleased me about the script was the fact that we were gonna, we were, th th I was like, oh, this is what I want. I want an origin story. Because we've, we've, this lore has been going on for such a long time, and we have such a sense of um, who the Autobots are now, and who the Decepticons are now, and we know that there is this deep, deep history. And now that we finally get to get a sense of what that history is, I think is super exciting. B-127 is the uh, technical name of the character I play um, who uh, becomes Bumblebee and uh, the character that we've, we've known throughout the years as Bumblebee. And when we first uh, kind of lay eyes on him in the film, he is a guy who works kind of in the dregs. He works like at the, the lowest level, literally almost the lowest level of um, Cybertron in like the guts and the bowels of the planet. And he just kind of, he works with junk. And, um, but the thing about him that's really appealing, I find, is that he, he has made a world for himself so that it's not, and he also, he also seems to, he has like, not delusions of grandeur, but he always looks on the positive side of things. And I think that he's, he's like, you know, I used to be over here, and then I did this job over here, and I did another job over here. I mean, I just, they liked me so much, they just moved me up, and they were actually moving him down. So I think that he decides this is the world I'm going to live in. I'm going to make it as positive as, as I possibly can. And that's, and that's what he does. And in fact, he, ha he even has four friends that, he, that live with him in the, um, in the um, lower uh, recesses of the city. But, but, he, but the thing about his friends is that he made them. He, he created them out of parts and junk. And uh, that's who he um, spends his time with. But he, he's got this really kind of indomitable spirit. And that's one of the most, uh, one, of his, one of his very kind of charming traits. The cast was one of the reasons I said yes. It was absolutely top notch. And when you think of like uh, a kind of a positive, optimistic, warm, but also an alpha male at the same time, Chris Hemsworth comes to mind. And, and um, there's a gravitas that Brian Tyree Henry has that I think it makes him perfect to play Megatron. Because he also, he, the, the, I, I certainly buy the transformation because of that gravitas. And the authority the authority and the, speaking of gravitas, 
but the, the authority that Lawrence Fishburne brings to Alpha Trion, it just settles in perfectly. I mean, everybody, I, Josh thought very carefully, clearly about this cast. I mean, Steve Buscemi, there's, there's like this kind of unhinged gonzo quality that he brings to his character, and everybody, everybody brings something that comes from them that's, that's part of them naturally to the roles, and I think it's fantastic. My experience with Josh was, um, was, was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And there is, um, we have, a, he has a very uh, collaborative spirit. And I was allowed to ad lib quite a bit and also improvise quite a bit. Um, and it, it really speaks to Josh's talent that he can let an actor kind of roam free a little bit. But he, he has very, um, very particular set parameters. But the thing is, the parameters are far enough away from each other that you can roam. And, and do things with inside those parameters. And he's very good at, des at describing what the parameters are so that he can really, really tell the story that he wants to tell. And I think that's a gift, and, and Josh possesses it. One main theme is friendship, but also whatever it is that disintegrates a friendship is also a theme. And I guess that could be maybe another theme is having, is having tunnel vision and, and not being able to move from where you are emotionally. And I, I think that that's important. Emotional flexibility seems to be, or the lack thereof, seems to be a theme in this movie. Also, um, and this may sound a little hackneyed, but there's, there's teamwork. Like, this, this feels like this couldn't have happened without the team. Everybody is integral in the next step of the adventure. And um, so those are, those are some of the themes. And I think also there's a theme of loss. There's that loss of connection between people who felt very deeply for each other at one point in time. And that, um, uh, the tragedy of that, of, that being, of that being broken up. I think it's gonna be really great to see this movie in a movie theater. I, really important, I think, because the visuals are sumptuous. And you can't, and, and the other thing is because of the way that this, is being, this has been created through the effects, you're, do, you're not gonna get visuals like this in a live action movie. It, 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 it is, it's really quite special. And also, because it's such an, an action movie, I think that people are going to jump back in their seats and they're going to make noise and they're going to, it's, it's going to be a fun group experience for any audience that, that, um, that you know, goes to the, to the theater to see it. I just hope that people go see it on a big screen so they get the breadth of, of this world of this world, it's a, a world like we've never seen it before. We've never seen Cybertron this way before.